okay. So this is this is not sponsored yet, all right? Just just so you know, full disclosure, I'm being sponsored to play this for two hours today. This no doesn't count yet in a way. So the sponsorship will be later with one of the one of the developers. Now we just prepare and create characters for like two hours, or I don't I don't know how long it's gonna take, but yeah, sandwiches. You can you can order sandwiches. Enjoy. Uh, you see this? Very good. Is the music loud enough for you? Good. You bought a cozy onesie on my influence. Onesies are great though. Oh, I love them. They're just a bit warm for, you know, summer, but... Characters. So there are a couple pre-made ones. But we're just gonna make new ones. And I need two. So there are hill dwarfs and what I've seen and very much liked. Snow dwarfs. The half elves, half orcs, humans. High Elves, Sylvan Elves, Marsh Halflings, and Island Halflings. And I'm gonna go sit in the left corner. The music stops when I click out of it, but there is that. Should I? Wait. I think I need to move my camera slightly still, but you know, for, for now. Snow Dwarf and a human, then. Hmm. I mean, halflings are fun, but I thought about... What about a half-orc? Wouldn't that be cool? Ah, oh, what did... What did they do? So... Here's the character, though, right? Then... <sighs> ancestry. Okay, so Ancestry is the race and then the lineage is where they're coming from i suppose let's read about dwarfs and snow dwarfs because i like those the chair is clearly a half orc where's the half dwarf maybe that's not a thing where's the half halfling Dwarfs! Five move. Is that five? The number of cells a creature can move during combat round. Okay, so five. Ability score increase, constitution plus two. Because dwarfs. Dwarven resilience. Saving throw advantage against poison resistance to poison damage. Dwarven combat training. Proficient with battle axe, hand axe, and warhammer. Which is not really my weapon of choice. But there are snow dwarves. Do I have a choice here, even? One and a half halfling be a quarterling. <laughs> oh god, love speak easy and normal. Yes, I suppose. Reza as well, the quarterling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, Lopen Zorko. Welcome in. Heavy armor training, unaffected by heavy armor penalties. Then there is a snow dwarf. Plus one dex, crossbow expertise for heavy crossbows, dark vision. Don't cure anybody. See normally in dim light and in natural darkness as if in dim light. Languages, common dwarvish. Snow dwarf endurance plus two to constitution in saving throws. Okay, and then we could be male or female. Snow dwarfs are sturdy and adventurous, adapted to harsh terrain and low temperatures. Blocky, agile, and sturdy, they are fierce warriors and keepers of their ancestral culture and traditions. Dark vision. It, uh, like, that sounds pretty really cool, cool, right? Someone subbed. Hello, Zamba. Thank you very much for the reset. Thank you for the Prime Gaming and for four months. Welcome back. I hope you're good. Enjoy the emotes. Thank you, thank you. So yeah, that, that sounds really nice, doesn't it? Half-elves... Uh, they don't have any specific specification when it comes to weapons. But they're good with charisma. They also have dark vision. Half-orcs... 
savage attacks. When you score a critical hit with a melee weapon, you can roll one of the weapon damage dice one additional time and add the result to the extra damage of the critical hit. But apparently it also doesn't matter what, uh, what weapons they have. Good. Humans. Just very boring. Cool. Good. Good. And then there are elves. Proficient in perception. Four hours of meditation are sufficient to rest. That sounds a bit OP. They also have dark vision. And there is the Sylvan Elf for longsword, short sword, short bow, long bow. Okay, that's just an elf, elf, elf thing. And the halflings. What about the halflings? Yeah, the humans are pretty basic. Yeah. What's that P and P group? Pen and paper. Okay. Where the only dwarf character was the tallest. Yeah, <laughs> giant crow. Okay, that's really funny. In my last D&D campaign that I that I played in, I was a halfling, actually. I was a halfling ranger. Hello, Cripson. You already want to watch this, but you have things that need to be done. All right. How dare I not run my schedule by you? I'm, I'm so sorry. But don't worry about it. This will be up on YouTube eventually. You have a good day, all right? And, and go do your things that you have to do. Thank you for stopping by, though. If you pick human and role-playing game, we need to have a discussion about your choices. <laughs> yeah, I don't... I mean... I've played a human once. Okay, okay. Now we, now we talk character creation, right? So in your previous pen and paper games, scenarios, campaigns, campaigns is a good word, what have you played? Because I've played a human, but she was an Amazon. So she was, she was not like your standard human. She was amazing. I loved her. And her name was Demea, which I think is just amazing. So that was, that was my first character. That was actually not my first character. Wait, I played before that. Who did I play then? Okay, I actually don't remember my very first character, but that was the, that was the Amazon, hu human, but Amazon. Then, then I played, uh, was that, I think that was a half orc actually. I don't think it was a proper orc, but a half orc after that. So the first one was, I don't remember the D&D &D again. The Amazon was actually the dark eye that we played. And then the half orc, I was in Pathfinder. And then I played the Halfling Ranger in D&D. &D. That was my latest one. I never really made it far though. 100% Ling. Does that mean a Halfling Quark? I played humans, half elves, elves, and halflings. Nice. Your fantasy is to actually be a productive human being, so. Good luck, dog. Good luck with being productive. Last character you play was a Goliath Barbarian. Hey, that sounds cool. There are good reasons to pick a human. It's also a bit boring. Hmm. Your most recent character is a Latorian from Ptolis. It's a lion person. Okay, thank you for saying that because I wouldn't have guessed that's a lion person. Cool. Was the god of the Amazons called Bezos? <laughs> No, no, it's a different Amazon thing. I need, sorry, I need to uh, actually close this program here. Um, halflings, here, halflings. Lucky, halflings are lucky, yes, and that's really cool. They're also nimble. The marsh ones, they also have dark vision. And they're good with swamps. The island ones, rope dancing, okay. Yeah, so how about we make we make a snow dwarf and a half orc. We start with a snow dwarf. Female. Okay. Now I need to pick a class. Okay. Wait, and you like battle axes, hand axes, and whammers. Oh, or a heavy crossbow. 
What do you think? A dwarf with a crossbow. That that doesn't seem right, does it? Thank you for liking Love Broken. Thank you. Uh, Reza never played D&D. Would you like to, Reza? Because, you know, I'm sure there are groups that are just there online. I mean, it's, it's a bit tricky to get grouped together and then time zones, but... You know. You played a dwarf berserker that transitioned into a shamanic spell stuff, and after that, a halfling warlock. They talked to trees and had all good tree. We talked all the time. Oh wait, a god tree. It's funny. I didn't even pick a human to get specific class bonuses. So they're always generic jack of all trades. Yeah, yeah. You looking forward to conventions again? Now that the COVID is kind of over, kind of right. But me too. I'm very much looking forward to TwitchCon EU in July. Oh, it's gonna be great. I've started to make plans for it. Like, I, I am definitely going and I've everything booked, but like plans on what I'm gonna do when I'm there. Because I've been invited to stuff already. And I'm so excited about it. I don't want to really talk about it because it might not happen. And you know, maybe the whole thing gets canceled, who knows? But I'm, I'm already starting to make plans for what I'm actually doing when I'm there. And it's gonna be so good. <sighs> I hope it's gonna happen. Ah, oh. a friend of yours played a dwarf once, carried around a table as his weapon of choice. How big was that table? Was it like a nightstand thing or...? That is true, Reza. Those games are a good start. And they can also be played co-op. Enjoy your food, Reza. Nom noms. Okay, so Barbarian. What's, what's that? Fierce warriors from the edge of civilization. Their battle rage makes them dangerous combatants. And this means I got it from a DLC. Okay, cleric. They are servants of their chosen deity. In exchange for their faith and service, they are granted miraculous powers as long as they constrain themselves to following their god's creed and perform their religion's, religion's rituals. The druids, they're a part of an ancient order dedicated to nature. Their powers and spells are attuned to animals, plants, and the elemental forces. The fighter. Fighters are trained in the arts of combat. They're adept with most weapons, but often choose to specialize. All fighters can use armor, shields, and ranged weapons. The paladin. Paladins are elite warriors who have sworn unbreakable holy oaths to fight evil. In addition to their weapons and armor, they wield divine powers and clerical spells. The Ranger, my absolute favorite class ever. Wanderers of Salas's wilderness, Rangers are trained survivalists, fierce in battle and stealthy hunters. Excellent trackers and archers, they also have some spell casting ability. The Rogue, my second favorite class. Rogues are versatile first and foremost. They use their natural talents to master various skills and find their own way to thrive. Generally resourceful, they are known for their cunning and their ability to launch deadly sneak attacks. The Sorcerer. From a Sorcerer update. Oh, the new Dungeon Maker content, right, okay. Sorcerers have an innate ability to channel arcane magic, usually through a supernatural origin. Sorcerers are also able to alter the fabric of magic using sorcery points. And then there is the Wizard. Wizards spend their lives studying magic, learning more and more powerful and wondrous spells. Despite their weakness in physical combat, the magical abilities take them dangerous, make them dangerous foes. Well, a snow dwarf. We should go, like, fighter, probably. Maybe barbarian. Barbarian dwarf. What do you think? What do you think would fit best? You love druids and clerics, punch baths, and heal goods. All there. True. True. I mean, I mean druid sounds nice. Hmm, barbarian. You can get whatever you like, anything will work. Oh, I know, I know. I've never played a barbarian before, like in, in those games. Barbarian. Saving through proficiency, strength, and constitution, which is fine because we have plus constitution as a dwarf. Simple weapons, martial weapons, light armor, medium armor, shield. 
Oh, what about the fighter? Wait. A train to craft basic ammunition. Wait, it, it doesn't matter. We're gonna go barbarian. You have a halfling barbarian. You are enjoying it? Yeah, it looks cool. Yeah, it does. It does. Barbarians are fun. All right, it's gonna be a barbarian snow dwarf. Choose two of these skills: animal handling, athletics, intimidation, nature, perception, survival. I'm gonna choose that later on, right? Rage in battle. You fight with primal ferocity. On your turn, you can enter a rage as a bonus action. This grants you advantage on strength saves and checks. An initial plus two bonus to melee attack damage and resistance to slashing, bludgeoning, and piercing damage. Lasts for one minute or ends if you have not attacked or suffered damage since your last turn. You start with two rages renewed after a long rest. Unarmored defense. When you're not wearing armor, your armor class equals 10 plus your dexterity modifier plus your constitution modifier. You can use a shield and still gain this benefit. Okay. Great axe. Uh, what was the dwarven thing again? It said battle axe, hand axe, warhammer though. Okay, I want a battle axe. Hand axe two, or spear. Now we're gonna get with us explorer pack, which is a backpack. Life torches, ration pouch, healing remedy, projectile parts, small smith toolkit. And then we get full javelins, barbarian clothes. Validate. Okay, cool. Good. We have a battle axe now, which fits with the dwarf's stuff. You start with a weapon. You go bonus four. I got a bonus four. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know nothing of this game, but from what's shown on screen, isn't the fighter... Make more use of bonus decks and crossbow thingy. But do we want the crossbow? I don't I don't think like a dwarf with a crossbow I can't really see it. So I took the snow dwarf because it's snow. Which is ignore the crossbow. Yeah, no, I don't I don't think so. We'll go with the barbarian dwarf. It's a snow dwarf. Hello, Finnan. A barbarian, right? Okay. Barbarians are fierce warriors from the edge of civilization. The battle rage makes them dangerous combatants. I think that's the same thing that's that they say here. Okay. Background selection. It determines the character's history prior to their adventuring life. The background offers equipment and prof proficiencies, but also the ability to select personality flags. These determine the social behavior of the character during narrative sequences. Okay. Then there is alignment. Oh yeah, no, I, I see. I'm glad we started this already because it's gonna take a long time, especially for two players, yeah. You did, Finnan, you did, yeah. I have a sponsorship for it. I'm gonna start that later though. Now I'm just preparing with character creation, but later on I'm gonna play co-op with one of the developers. So I'm, I'm just preparing right now. Personality. Okay, so we have two personality flags. There is law and chaos and good and evil. And so last of the alignment is the second form of personality customization. Yes. Evil, you say? Resulting. Okay, you can reinforce a personality trait by selecting the same flag twice. Flags will not affect gameplay, choices, or dialogue options, but simply modify the way your character speaks, their tone, and manners. The resulting personality is summarized at the bottom left of the screen, where the deepest color represents the strongest personality. Okay, so even if we're evil, we basically get, still get the same story, right? There are nine backgrounds to choose from. The academic, which I don't think makes sense. You had two passions growing up, history and magic. Your teacher saw your interests and ensured that your potential was nurtured. Your mission in life is to discover the secrets of the past, both magical and mundane. So you took your backpack and set out to discover the wonders of Celeste for yourself. The acolyte, 
You have spent your life at the service of a temple to a specific god or pantheon of gods. You act as an intermediary between the realm of the holy and the mortal worlds, performing sacred rites and offering sacrifices in order to conduct worshippers into the presence of the divine. Aristocrat, born among the lords of your people, you have received a higher education. Your manners and speech are formal and rigid, and you have difficulties when dealing with low-ranking individuals. A life privilege gave you enough perks to start your adventuring life with a comfortable package. <laughs> oh god, I, I haven't, I mean, I like those, but I haven't found anything that fits our character yet. We'll see. A very well-read barbarian. <laughs> Barbarian priest. I don't see that happening. I really don't. But academic barbarian, PhD in fighting. Hey, why not? Hello, eclectic sound wave surfaced. Welcome. Lila, I'm great at lock picking, and if you don't have a thief. I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure what my co-op player will play as. Well, we'll see. You you need to tell during the creation process. I've played tabletop RPGs before, so you know, so far I'm still alright, but I, I know it can be a lot, yeah. You keep thinking this is an alignment chart and you're like, wow, they're way off. A philosopher barbarian would- it would be funny, a snow philosopher, huh? Let, let's just see. There's also the law keeper. As a former deputy, you have instinct for spotting trouble and the force of personality to nip it in the bud. After a while, keeping the peace in the principality of Masgarth, though, dealing with petty criminals every day just wasn't enough. You took what you had learned and embarked on a life of travel and discovery. The low life. Born in the streets, you have always been discarded by most commoners and learned to survive with close to nothing. This made you tough and resourceful. Manners and education are not your strong suit, but you have learned to compensate with other qualities. Like lockpicking, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A snow losopher. Snow losopher. That's one heck of a word. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Barbarian priests can murder their god. Oh, murder for their god. Okay. But like 20 plus years ago, you also played real RPG this complex. Nice. So after character creation, Finn, and then actually playing this game, how how close is it to what you've played and how, I don't know, how nostalgic do you get while playing? Barbarian muscle magic. Excellent for sleeping spells. <laughs> oh my, what about the philosopher though? You've spent almost all of your life reading books and learning about the world of Celasta and even others. You're passionate about knowledge and expert when it comes to understanding. Now you've decided to take a new path to explore and discover the world by yourself. Is that a lone wolf thing? Probably not. The fellow Snowfer. <gasps> I like that. The Cell Sword. You spent your youth in a company of mercenaries, and since then, your fighting skills have been put to the service of gold. Companionship and bloodshed have forged your character and made you both tough, tough and bitter. The Spy. You have spent years working as a low-level diplomatic aide, learning the tricks of spycraft between the Principality, the New Empire and the Kingdom of Galavan. You have chosen not to take sides and never become an official spy, but you have retained the skills necessary for your emancipation. And last but not least, the Wanderer. You were born in the marches, in a small outpost built during the Principality's attempt to colonize this region. You were raised and trained to survive the harsh and perilous environment. You had a few friends. You had few friends, no school, and became a loner, though you learned the true worth of friendship, the kind that keeps you alive. Hmm. Mm. The pants do look very comfy. That's true. No chafing there. Is snow even real? Yeah. You know it is. There's, there's no snow on the mountain. Okay, so we can't be the wanderer because we were not born in a march. We, we are from a snow land. Mountain. Cave. Whatever. Um. Barbarian. Barbarian snow dwarf. I mean, cell sword is so typical. I want to go with something really funny. Shall we go with something funny? Thank you for the hydration. 
The real friends are the muscles we've made along the way. I like it. Ah, uh, you have time to spend half a day just playing. Right, yeah. Aristocrat. That'd be funny, wouldn't it? Like a, a highborn dwarf that's just looking down at everybody. But also barbarian. Barbarian aristocrat. How does that... It doesn't make any sense, but I think that's great. The philosophy of the axe. Let's read this again. Born amongst the lords of your people, you have received a higher education. How do you become a barbarian, though, if, you, if you're if you an aristocrat? So we have manners. We, we speak formally. A formally speaking barbarian, wouldn't that be hilarious? And we can't deal with low-ranking individuals. A life of privilege. Loud and boisterous, flaunting their wealth, but uncultured. I think, I think that's gonna be good. We'll, we'll take it. We'll take it. It likes to see blood spilled. Suppose. Let's go with the aristocrat. Yeah, because we, we can't really... No, we haven't spent all our time reading books, right? Now it is if you can't get into an RPG within a few days of playing, you've more or less forgot your goals in the game. Yeah, no, I get that. It, it needs to hook you, right? Proficient in history, persuasion, and intimidation, which I think works really well. We can choose two additional languages. We have a sigil ring. Hold for more info. Okay. This ring bears the arms of your noble family, marking you as a member. And we have 80... Is that gold? My savings. Value none. Okay. Background personality flags. Choose two. Authority, lawfulness, egoism, or altruism. The tendency to enforce rules and beliefs with authority and leadership. Follow rules, laws, and order rather than chaos. Put oneself, friends, and family first at the expense of others. Always try to help those in need. We are an aristocrat, but also barbarian. So now we need to like put our personality in between those now. And it's... I don't know. Hmm. One of your characters in the game constantly yells out, you suck, when another character misses with an attack. Kind of rude and you wonder why they're even friends to begin with. That's really funny though. <laughs> I like this. I like this a lot. The daughter ripping apart the dresses and fine clothes of a culture breaking free of the social constraints. Hmm. Am I starting the original campaign on the new DLC one? I'm not sure. Because I will... So, I'm being sponsored to play this later on with a dev. I'm gonna ask the dev what they want me to do. If they want me to play the DLC or not. So I'm not sure. altruism do we just help i mean i suppose helping those in need would make sense although we're an aristocrat we don't we don't really know how to talk to those people friends and family first at the expense of others i think egoism works really well with an aristocrat doesn't it i need to pick another one. Oh, you don't see this i'm, I'm hiding this let me here so right now we're very formal, but there's also violence. That's probably because we're barbarian, right? And then egoism, because I just picked this, right? Altruistic violence. We'll see. Have you seen the sponsor people play the new DLC content? All right. Do I have, like, does it matter which characters I pick then? Or do I, do I choose that later on when I start a game? Do you know? Always help those in need. Nah. Hey, why can I not be evil here now? Authority. Tensity to enforce rules and beliefs with authority and leadership. That makes sense because we're an aristocrat, so we, we think we have the authority to do this, right? It does make sense, Grey Fox. I agree, yes. Hi, Golta. You choose the characters while setting up the game. 
Yeah, so, okay, so I set up the game for the DLC and then I just pick the characters that I've made, right? Great. Additional personality flags, choose two. So there is, there is good here. The good evil axis and then the law and chaos axis. Altruism. It, it, definitely not because I just also didn't pick this here. Also not lawfulness. Pragmatism. Value practicality over principles. Kindness. Care about others, preferring to make friends rather than enemies. Cynicism. Scoff at principles and values. Authority. I already pick this. Greed. Value wealth and comfort above all else. We are aristocrats, right? Caution. Take care of one's own safety above all. No. Egoism. I already have this. Violence. Tendency to solve problems with violence even when there are other options. Hmm. I mean, I am barbarian, right? Okay, well... Hmm. Yeah, Emil, Emil has characters already made. I'm not sure which ones, but we'll, we'll see. <laughs> That's what you do, fair enough. Sounds like a nice combination. A formal, aggressive, egoistic guy. He wouldn't have companions like this. Perfect, isn't it? Cynicism. Scoffed principles and values. But I think as, a, as an aristocrat, we do have principles and values. I don't think we can just scoff at that. Double up on violence. Triple up on the violence. Well, I mean, I'm so weird. We're evil. Perfect. It's very good. Now, let me hide again. I think it said the deepest color is the one that you've got the most. I'm, we're super, super formal. We've got a violent score of 18 now. Authority 13 and greed 10. Good. Yeah, yeah. Hello, Alex. Good morning. The new desk is great. I love it. And yes, the camera angle is slightly different, so you don't see the mic anymore. Um... I, yeah, I'll I'll watch the stream afterwards and see see how it is. <laughs> but I really like the desk so far. I hope you had a great weekend, Alex. Dwarven radicals, OP. You can smell them from a mile away. Talking elf jokes, teasing dwarves. Oh, okay. Who's Mike? Oh, oh god, my Mike. My mic is still here. It didn't do anything. Um, we're, we're done here. Although I haven't picked languages yet, but maybe that comes later. Ability scores are six core attributes defining where your character excels. Strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma with values from three to 20. The bonus under each score is applied to any relevant action. For example, the strength bonus is added to attack rolls based on strength. The ability scores can be generated in several ways, either randomly or using a point system. Classes have preferred ability scores, for example, intelligence for a wizard. So make sure your character's highest score... Highest scores are in the class's primary abilities, of course. All characters' ancestries provide a bonus to some ability scores, leading to interesting ancestry class synergies. Oh, you can say that, alright. Ability scores can be increased at level 4, 8, and so on. Fights increase even more often. My available scores. Dice rolls. Oh, we definitely have to, to roll it. That's, that's how you make a character. Drag and drop your rolls onto the ability scores. Okay, so I've, I've already rolled. 16 is good. My most important ability scores are Strength, Constitution, and Dexterity. All right. Strength, Constitution, and Dexterity. Good. So I've got 16 of those. Not bad. If 20 is the max, I suppose that's all right. Then we have Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma. Well... It's not amazing, but hey. Hello, Legafish. Good afternoon. Welcome, welcome. I hope you had a great Easter weekend. The max is 20. 
I think the dice makes possible to get 18 plus two bonus making it 20. So are you saying I should re-roll? Can I just re-roll those? Oh, no, I have to re-roll all of them. This is, this is a good Wes. Oh God, how many times can I? Oh, this is slightly better. I'll take this. How many re-rolls do I have? I like the previous one. Oh no. Oh no. It's a 17. The re-rolling simulator. Infinite is really nice. It's not very accurate, but it's nice. I should re-roll 20 times. I didn't count now. But hey, I got a 17, so we'll, we'll just go with it. Perfect. So, there you go. 17 strength. I've got oh I've got all of these 17 now. This is this is perfect. Okay, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. So what do I want to be worse in? I am a barbarian. And I do have trouble speaking to the lowlifes, right? So But I am I am aristocrat. But I am barbarian. I'm very intelligent, right? I'm a very intelligent barbarian. Wisdom reflects how attuned you are to the world around you and represents perceptiveness and intu intuition. And intelligence is the mental acuity, accuracy of recall, and the ability to reason. Actually, I'm actually I'm not that smart. Here we go. I'm not that but wide. Uh, Someone subbed. Got the wrong thing now. There we go. I'm not that intelligent. Here we go. I'm not that intelligent, but it's okay. So I think I got it now. Okay, okay, okay. Ah, similar day. Thank you very much for the Brian Gaming. Spending it here. Appreciate the support. Thank you. Enjoy the emotes. Welcome back for the second month. Hello. I hope you have a great Monday. Hi, hi. Switch decks and constitution to get 18 con and, and the plus four modifier. Decks and constitution. How so? But I won't. No, 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 no. I know I can't do this. But it has to be 17. It has to be. Nope. No, Lothan. Nope. Nope. No, no, no. Slightly above average in intelligence. I do need the 17s. There is no other way. This this is the way, chat. It would be best to have just, you know, all 17s, but I, this is perfect. Okay. There was an optimize button, by the way, but we don't need to optimize. We've got the 17s. Proficiencies. Okay. This stage lets you acquire proficiency in various fields of expertise. Your class and ancestry determine a set of proficiencies or range of options to choose from. The right side of the screen lets you choose your proficiencies by type and origin, and you must spend all your points before you can proceed. Okay. Let's just say, okay. Most attacks and ability checks use the proficiency bonus to determine your efficiency. To start, the bonus start is plus two and increases with level five, nine, etc. It's added to the action rolls where the character is proficient, saving throws, ability checks, attack rolls, using a proficient weapon and magical attacks and spell difficulty class. Yes. Yes. I'm proficient with strength saving throws. And also constitution ones. Uh Okay, here are the languages. So, proficiencies. Your ancestry, class, and background let you choose proficiencies in skill, tools, feats, and languages. You say auto. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let them make the computer let my let the computer make my choice. Here we go. How many points do I have though? I don't know. Okay, so I can only choose those that, 
they have the plus here. Note it. Why is there an I? Although part of the rule says invalid for roleplay purposes. This element is not used in the Crown of Magister main campaign. Ah, okay. Investigation. That's that's fine, that's fine. Time to get this game just to keep rolling the dice until you get a perfect roll. <laughs> that would be funny, right? Just roll all crits. Do you think that's possible? Hmm. I have two points to spend. Oh, that's what it that's what it says here. Okay, so two in class and two in background languages. And I suppose those are the class skills. Okay, so athletics. Uh, difficult situations while while climbing, jumping, or swimming. It could be the the most lethic dwarf ever. Animal handling. Mm, but, I don't know nature. Law about terrain, plants, animals, weather, natural cycles. I suppose that makes. Oh, intelligence though. Mm. Wisdom check. <laughs> So, so great. Although it would it would be good to have this, right? Guide your group through frozen wastelands. Identify signs that owl bears live nearby. Predict the weather and avoid quicksand and other natural hazards. Shall we go with survival? Because we're we're all the aristocrats. Survival perception, maybe. Let's see, checks. Let's you spot here or otherwise detect the presence of something general awareness of my surroundings and keenness of my sense okay we want perception and we want oh okay so i already have persuasion intimidation history i'm gonna go with athletics here we go hello thales bragger is the game based on DD? &D? Uh, I'm not sure if it's officially based on D&D, &D, but the developer asked me how well I know D&D &D and, you know, if you do, you, you've got it a bit easier there. Owlbears? Owlbears? Is, what is that even? It sounds cool. But I don't really know what to imagine when I hear owlbears. Hello, my row. Happy Monday to you too. How's it going? I hope you had a great weekend. Yeah, I think I think so too. So I picked athletics now and perception. I don't have any tools. Weapons. This is just what we're proficient in: simple weapons, martial weapons, light armor, medium armor, shield. Okay. And the languages. So I speak common language. It's debased from the Imperial High Elvish, infused with bits of Termarian language. It's a legacy of Salas's history. And then I speak Dwarvish, obviously, right? It has survived the Cataclysm, whatever that is. I could also... Ooh! If I plan to pick a half-orc, should we, should we speak Orcish? Draconic. So, dragons, obviously. Druidic, I can't learn that. Because it's a secret language, I like this. Elvish. Giant. Goblin. Halfling. Orcish. Spice codebook, obviously I can't do that too. Terran, what's this? Primordial language spoken by creatures from the elemental plane of Earth. All those otherwise related to the Earth in some way. And Old Tamarian, an ancient language originated from Tirma. The lost world of humans. It has been protected and transmitted since the cataclysm. I'm leaning towards orcish. What do you say? Goblinese? No, I don't know owlbears. Pick us in Discord soon. All right, all right, good. Hello, Damilies. It uses D and D five point one e rule set, but it's an original setting. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know it actually uses that rule set. It's an owl and also a bear. Of course. Like, like you're a badger, but also an anaconda, right? Get a crazy yesterday with a family visiting and six children fueled by Easter chocolate. Oh God, that is, that is a kind of crazy that I'm glad I skipped. But I hope you had fun though. Dwarves are connected to earth magic. 
But I can't, I can't do any magic. Wait, I need to look at that picture. This is an owl bear. It actually looks really cool. So basically it's, it's the size of a bear with claws, but with feathers and then an owl head. I like, I like that. It was fun, if, if you say so. Of course you can do magic. You're an axe mage. No, I'm not. I'm connected, so I'm a, I'm a snow dwarf. We, d we do live in mountains though, right? Goblinese. It's even simpler than orcish. The language spoken by orcs and the brethren. What would be the reason for a dwarf to learn orcish? As an aristocrat, shouldn't we, shouldn't we learn Elvish? Shouldn't we learn Elvish as an aristocrat? Know your enemy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Giant? Why would it? Because because we're so small and then the giants are so tall, so we should be able to just scream at them with a megaphone and hope that they understand us. Maybe a dwarf learns the language of their enemies, possibly. Orcs speak orcish. They, apparently they do. They do, yes. Um, Hazaya, thank you very much for the Prime Gaming. Spending it here, not letting it go to waste. Thank you for the support and, and welcome in. Have fun, enjoy it. Enjoy the emotes as well. Hello. Dragon, because dragons, right? So if we have an orc with us, then we don't need to talk to orcs, right? Draconic. Draconic. A dragons and other reptilian creatures. Terran. Creatures from the elemental plane of Earth. Actually, I think that makes so much sense because we're... I can, I can pick two languages, but I'm going to go with Terran because we're dwarfs and we live in mountains, right? So it should be, it, it would make sense to be able to talk to Earth, right? Parcel tongue. Okay, let's pick that. I like it. What about Klingon? So Terran and Draconic, because as a dwarf, you know, there might be a dragon in one of those dwarven vaults. And then we need to talk to the dragon. Right? That makes sense. Identity. The final stage of character creation allows you to customize the appearance of the, and the identity of a character. You can freely select all available options and a valid first name is required to complete the character creation process. What's a non-valid first name? A clan name? Is that like the last name? It is the last name, okay. Start with face one. And then I also need body decoration. Oh, can there be tattoos? Can there be tattoos? Okay. I know, right? 317s. I, I couldn't pick anything else. All right. You always associate Terran with human. Oh, because Earth, uh, yeah. Not here, though. Probably restrict some profanity for online play purposes. Oh, for the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course, of course. Isn't that usual language used between dwarves and dragons? The dragon's fiery breath and the dwarf's sharp axe. No, apparently we can also talk to each other. The final stage, but only for the first character. I need to make another one. <laughs> Hello, frog boy. The dwarf spent a little too much time in the sun. I think so, too. Dwarfs are supposed to be very, very bright, right? Because they live underground. And also I'm a snow dwarf, so I should... I should be a smurf. Uh, I should be very, very bright and light because of winter and no sun and under the mountain, right? How's this? Uh, so this is phase one. I like phase two. 
a body decoration. Oh, there are tattoos. I love it. Ooh. I need, I need those. There's so many of them. Oh, so cool. Okay, okay. Number three looks nice. Mm. Eh, not quite. Number ten. I like three and ten so far. You like eight? Eight. I found the tattoos. Character creation will take another four hours. <laughs> Pale and red hair. Red hair. Blue hair. Oh, dark skin to blend in with the rocks. Ooh, that's also a good point. Hmm. That's also quite cool. We should look at the hair first. All right, so I said three. Yeah, no, three is not enough. Okay, then you said eight. I like eight. I just don't like the, the two lines here on the chin. Ten. Ten is more like makeup. Looks a bit odd. I have to go with eight, huh? Let's go with eight. That looks, that looks badass. I like it. What is Senua? Senua? Ten is good. Eleven. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't like it that much. This is good, but I don't, I don't want it to look too much like makeup. I want it to be clear. Clearly visible as a tattoo, not just makeup. Body decoration, we could make that. We could make that red or blue. Or brown. I, I like that, like the rust red. <gasps> we can have scars too. More tattoos. Oh, quite. We are a barbarian, right? So we, we should. Although, as an aristocrat. Hmm. It's not really good. There's a small one on the nose now. I like Scar 16. Which is a shame because, you know, 17, but... Oh, Hellblade. True. Yeah, she's got the blue, the blue thing here, right? Oh, I know, I know Hellblade. I just never played it for obvious reasons. Where's this? Is that on chin? I don't quite see it. Okay, I like, I like Scar 16. But maybe red is not the best. The best color for this. shape. We'll start with one. Okay. Oh, we'll see. It's not fun. All right. Purple would be in character with dark hair. White is a snow dwarf. Oh, that's true. We are snow dwarf. But then everything's just so, so white. I would, I would like it to be a bit more grey. Anyway, hair. This is this is close to what I have. Just a bit longer and no uh, side cut here. Hello, Ed. Welcome. Retitude right should give a bonus to initiative. Because <gasps> you're faster. So smart. We, we stick with red then. Hair shape, okay. Hmm. That looks very aristocratic.
I don't like turning her around. Like, the, the movement makes me very nauseous, like, immediately. This is 17. I don't think so. Although, that would be a great barbarian hairstyle. But I need, I need a good mix of barbarian, but also aristocrat. Or aristocratic. Like... Oh, we're through. Okay. How's... How's... How's this? <laughs> oh, this is really funny. How's this? Does that look like an aristocratic dwarf to you? <laughs> Padme, right? Black skin, white hair, like a polar bear. A polar bear has black skin? Does that make you move the character slower? No, slower is better, thank you. Very regal, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, we have a hairstyle. What about the hair color? Icy blue. I don't like gray. What about icy blue? And then... Oh, I, do, I do like this in white though, actually. Maybe we can find a better skin tone. Maybe a bit more... I'm very glad I restart this because this is going to take what, what What about this? It's not as as bright, but... Blue hair. It's slightly blue. It's very stylish. Re relatively simple and unconstrained. It's, it's perfect, right? Plus one for you see blue. Blue does look more snowy, you'll admit. It does. What else do we have? Eye color. Uh, grey. Sli slightly blue tints to it. Age. We are... Dwarves all look a bit old, right? Maybe not too old, but what about... What about this? It's good. Voice. You are a valued comrade. Oh, thank you. Oh my, an elementary mistake. You're still in the fight, my friend. He is now. All you your strength. Us? Victory is mine. Lucky? Perhaps. Interesting. A secret door. A little light is always welcome. A little light is always welcome. A palpable hit. Yeah, I think I like three most. Someone said. Yeah, yeah. Well, five months. <laughs> Special Spider, thank you very, very much for the reset for five months by now. Look at you. Thank you for the support. Welcome back. Enjoy the emails. Hanging out with us, of course. I hope you have a great Monday. Hello. How's it going? Blue skin and white hair. I don't want to smurf. One is also nice, but... Of course you've been detected. It seems effortless. I like, I like the a bit deeper voice more for her. Hello, Wolfie, and good morning. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Just a normal Monday. Hope everyone's all right. All right, nice. Good, good, good. So you don't have a day off. Sorry to hear that. But I'm glad, I'm glad it's all right. Additional backstory. <gasps> we don't have a name yet. Wait, we don't have a name. We need a, a name for... A barbarian, aristocrat, snow dwarf. Go. Tutkiri, pebbles. <laughs> oh, the clan. The clan is a snow fortress. Fortress. Ice. Cassie, icebound. Oh, icebound. Hmm. Hmm. Oh wait, I've got. I got a DM here. I need to read this. Oh, nice. Never mind. Ah, uh, I like Icebound. We can't have Cogdiri as if Diori did that. I know. I saw this on the clip. 
It does look nice, doesn't it, Plinth user? I think we we have we have a decent character here. Aurora. Hmm. Princess Axe. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, everyone calls it. Wait, Princess Angelina, Contessa, Luisa, Francesca, Banabana, Ofesca the first. But everyone calls it. Is that a reference to? I don't know. Something. Aurora. Aurora Snow Fortress. I, I, I like the sound of that. Aurora. We could go crazy and call her Kiri. What? Frost, Frostine? Frostine. Hmm. Plus one for Aurora. I, I know. I like Frostine. Chat, what do you think? Aurora or Frostine? Shall we have a poll? Dodorica Marbleheart. Valkyrie. <gasps> Frostine Snowflake? Oh, you know, that there's a bad connotation to Snowflake, though, which is really a shame because I love Snowflakes, but... She's clearly not a Snowflake as a barbarian. Aurora, Frostine, Ice... Oh, I mean, we are aristocrats, right? So how about just Aurora, Frostine... No! No, it's too long! Snow Fortress. Aurora... Frost... Oh, I like it, though. Shoot. Aurora, Frostine, Snow Fortress. How's this? Rhyme? Hmm. But Ryan doesn't sound as aristocratic as Frostine. Frostine Aurora. Aurora Frostine. Yeah, I know this way. Okay, okay, we've got a name. That was good. Thank you for the suggestions. I've got everything. Pronoun. They've got they pronoun. This is so perfect. Okay, what's the backstory? Aurora. Aurora Frostine. Of Snow Fortress. Fortress. We're sick of staying at home. Why not? We're sick of staying at home. Studying. This is not how you spell studying. And dealing with lowly servants. So she left home. How's this? Two... Two things. I don't really know. What's... Okay. You just picked it up yesterday. You love the combat. That's amazing, Night Knowledge. I'm glad to hear that. Very, very good. Yeah, I'm just... I'm just making a character. We need to make another one. Um, and then at about... 40 minutes, I have a sponsorship for it. So I'm, I'm only preparing. But this is great. Anything else you want to add to the backstory? She does not want to return. She dreamt of sandy beaches. No, 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 that's heresy. No. She doesn't want to return. Uh, with lowly servants. So she left home. Never to return again. Four reasons. Good. Hello, Mattress Wolf. Finish. Good achievement to crush your enemies. I survived character creation. Woo! All right, we need another one. <laughs> How long? That was an hour. I think it was an hour. Perfect. And now, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. It was it was a great team effort though. It works to suggest she left home because you wanted a ham sandwich, and there was no bread in the castle. She went to the supermarket, right? Just quickly. I think now I want to be in half orc. Six movement during combat, st strength plus two, constitution plus one, dark vision, menacing. You gain proficiency in the intimidation skill. Relentless endurance. When you are reduced to zero hit points but not killed outright, you drop, drop to one hit point instead. You can't benefit from this feature again until you finish a long rest. Savage attacks. 
When you score a critical hit with a melee weapon attack, you can roll one of the weapon's damage dice one additional time and add the result to the extra damage of the critical hit. There's going to be an, a female party here. Okay, half orc. You will be... It was melee. We, do, we need something melee, but not barbarian now. Let's see. For this character, you will want to press roll 20 times for... <gasps> for achievement reason. Oh, thank you, Lex, so much. Thank you. I will do that. Hi, Glitch. Hello. Thank you. Yes, it's recolored. Uh, slight, slightly short again, like about an inch shorter. And I've got... I've got those... I don't know. Lines in there. Super cool. I'm very happy about it. We're totally playing... No, so the game is actually Solasta, uh, Crown of the Magister. And we're probably going to play the new DLC later on, Lost Valley. But um, we're in the character creation category, because why not? Why not? Ranged. But we get... As a as an half-orc, we get a bonus on... On savage attack. Oh, we get savage attacks with melee crit with a melee weapon, so we can't be ranged. So, Barbarian, we already have this. I don't really like the clerics, druids, spells. We don't want spells. Could be a fighter. That with most weapons. What about paladin? Elite warriors who have sworn unbreakable holy oaths to fight evil. Well, we have a not-so-good dwarf in this group. I don't think that Hmm. An angry and savage paladin. Throws turn into animals. Yeah, we don't we don't want that. Rogue. The shadow tactics. <laughs> Versatile. Uh resourceful. They're known for the cunning. So what what does, what does that do? Dexterity and intelligence, saving throw proficiencies, light armor, simple weapons, long sword, rapier, short sword. They've got thieves tools. Choose four of these. All right. Smithing. You are trained to craft basic ammunition with smith's tools, like arrows and bolts. I don't. I don't want arrows and bolts. Two proficiency skills. Sneak attack. But a sneak attack would be fun. A rogue half orc. I kind of like. I kind of like the idea of the paladin. I'm not sure if there is a group dynamic between the characters, because I made this barbarian, aristocratic, snow dwarf who is basically evil. And then if I make a half orc that's a paladin and fights evil, I suppose it's not like evil evil, right? Savagely pick locks. Perfect. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Display the subclass choices granted at level 3. No way! There's a button that I can press. I did not see the button earlier. I can look at the subclasses already anyway. I think I think we're going to go with the paladin and we're just going to make the, the weirdest composition that you've ever seen. Co-work is the bigger a lot. Right, it's going to be a bit of a rough journey for them, I suppose. Hi, Zakovia! Yeah, Sorcerer could be fun, but the half-orc is good with melee. Or has a, has a bonus for melee, so... So Wisdom and Charisma. Okay, Light Armor, Medium Armor, Heavy Armor, Shield. Simple Weapons, Martial Weapons. Reveal Celestials, Fiends and Undead. Good. A healing Pool. A Pool of Healing Power. Five points per Paladin level. Lay on Hands. Spend points from your Healing Pool to restore lost HP. Neutralize poison. Spend five points from your lay on hands healing pool and neutralize one poison. And spend five points from your healing pool to cure one disease. That's really cool. With a long sword. Javelin. Holy symbol as an amulet. Spell focus. Clerical Paladin can use a holy symbol as a spell casting focus. Chainmail. We have a priest pack. With a backpack, two candles, ration pouch, healing remedy, 
Crafting manual, scroll of heal wounds, scroll of revivify. Okay, you get the priest pack, yes. Um, the javelin or the spear, the long sword. I suppose the long sword is fine. Long sword and shield. That's that's okay. Paladins are elite warriors. Oh yeah, I've read this already. Good with this. The other oath for the paladin. Oh yeah. Yeah, just a second. I'll, I need to read this and I can go back and, and look at it. The Darkest Dungeon characters never agree on anything. Oh yeah, Darkest Dungeon 2, right? There was so much bickering between them. Hmm. Fighter seems like the most canonic class for the orc, to be honest. Exactly, and that's why I don't want to pick it. But I agree with you. Clerics and Paladins have to choose one of Celeste's deities when created. For a Cleric, the selected deity offers a range of divine domains to specialize into. The selected divine domain grants automatically prepared spells, the ability to channel divinity, as well as new powers at higher levels. That sounds really cool. Sacred Oaths. So... This is what you wanted to see, Roger, right? The Oaths. Yeah, so Oath of Devotion. Uphold the loftiest ideals of justice, virtue, and order. They act with honor in pursuit of the greater good, hold themselves to the highest standards of conduct, and some, for better or worse, hold the rest of the world to the same standards. The Motherland. Dedicate their lives to restoring the pre-cataclysm world, undoing the land's decay, and bringing life back. Despite its violent and volcanic nature, they reject the terms Badlands in favor of Motherland. Oath of Termar. Belonging to an old order descended from the Termarian Inquisition, obsessed with their arch nemesis, arch enemies, the legendary Saw Akath, they conduct their rituals in the old language of Termar and hold grudges from the old time of the Cataclysm of thousands of years ago. And the Oath of Judgment uh, believe that no sin should be overlooked, no matter how small. Although the punishment must also fit the crime, they are relentless in their pursuit of justice, and those who decide to stand in their way had better be prepared. Okay, so it, I have to choose something here, right? I didn't realize I had to choose. Thank you, Roger. Well, the bar barbarian is more orky. Yeah, no, totally. The motherland. Restoring pre-cataclysm. That makes sense. I can't pick judgment. Oh, this is this is the new one. This is a new one with a new Lost Valley DLC. Does that mean everybody has a subclass and I just didn't pick it for the other one? Oh yeah, never mind, never mind. It does say I, I have to choose a level 3. Oh, for a second I thought because... This is your first, right? And then there's level 3 and then there's level 7. So I thought maybe I have to choose this now. And then at level 3, something else happens. We're all good. We're all, we're all good. Hello, friend of Hobbits. How's it going? This is Solasta, uh, Crown of the Magister. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Good, good, good. No, we're, we're fine then. Still, I'm gonna click on this. Okay, select a deity. A run. The primordial god of the elements and patron of adventurers, peasants, hermits, and all others who value nature above civilization. The oldest of the Tamarian deities, Aaron, is the one to whom humanity first prayed while struggling to survive in a hostile environment. His spouse is Maraiki, the goddess of life and death. His clergy is divided into three main branches, each attend attached to one of Aaron's powers, fire, ice, and lightning. Einar is the god of valor and fidelity, and the patron of paladins, lawful warriors, and all those who bring light to darkness. The Church of Einar is organized into three orders. The blade is a militant order, a bulwark against chaos and evil. The shield is an order of protectors devoted to the flock. The beacon is an order of itinerant preachers helping the communities through which they travel with their strength at, at arms the healing skills and their knowledge of the law. This is so tiny. Oh, there's also an alignment. Wait, so this is neutral. This is lawful good. 
chaotic neutral you see got all athletes and gamers Aaron <laughs> all right Maraiki, the goddess of life and death, the patron of healers and embalmers, and the embodiment of universal duality. Traditionally, she is Aaron's wife. Her cult consists of two orders. The Order of Life Regnant travels the land as healers and defenders. They worship the healing, motherly aspect of Maraiki. The Order of Oblivion is an order of avengers and embalmers, where evil tries to pervert the cycle of life and death. The order ensures that the culprits are dealt with and the undead victims returned to the rest. Natural good. And then here we got Chaotic Neutral. Mizai. The goddess of mischief, protector of rogues and swindlers and patron of all those who chave against rules and enjoy a little chaos. Priests of Mizai seldom live a relaxing life. Usually they are one step ahead of the law if they are lucky. Many lead a double life, normal citizens by day and priests of the Mizai by night, because the cult of the Mizai is all outlawed in many nations and barely tolerated in most others. <laughs> ah. I I am I am reading most of it, Dab, yeah. Just to get an impression of what, what's there really, what we could do, but obviously you can just you can be quicker too. This is an, an anti-paladin run. I don't I don't it's just not a classic one, you know? And then there is Pakri, the goddess of law and knowledge and patron of judges and lawyers, teachers, librarians and scholars. She gifted humans with a thirst for knowledge so they could learn and develop their society and the law which preserves civilization. Her clergy is divided into two orders. The order of the book includes the most learned lawyers, lawyer priests in the world. And the order of the owl sends its members across the land to help those in need of protection and justice. Okay. Okay, so... Hmm. Hmm. I don't... I don't know. The God of Nerds, Pakri. Ha. <laughs> ha. Oh. Oh, I would really like to pick this one. But then I'm a paladin. Half-orc paladin. Chaotic neutral. But it is neutral. It's not... It's not evil. Wouldn't that be funny? Do it. I'll do it. I did it. Oh god, a class. I know a class, a background. We need to pick a background. Woohoo. Oh, okay. The half orc paladin worshipping the god of mischief. Was that you again? Born in the marshes? Colonized you. You were raised and trained to survive the harsh and perilous environment. Few friends, new school, became a loner. You learned the true worth of friendship. A wanderer seems fine. Half orc, paladin, and babysitter. Why not? Hello, Silver. It's good to see you. Welcome back. Hello, hello. Paladins are usually lawful good. Yeah, so we can't we can't be that, right? Hmm. That would be too too usual. A low life, born in the streets, discarded by most commoners, and learned to survive with close to nothing. This made you tough and resourceful. Manners and education are not your strong suit, but you've learned to compensate with other qualities. We could also be a low life. Why not a philosopher? Half half orc paladin spy. <laughs> this is great. Ah, reading books, learning about the world is Lester. Passionate about knowledge. And an expert when it comes to understanding. I suppose that, that makes a bit too much sense for the paladin, doesn't it? If she's a low life, she was a servant, which would create, you know, tension between between the orc and the dwarf it's perfect oh i'm dark here playing lawful good no i'm not so philosopher would be a choice a spy a paladin spy shall we be a spy 
Proficient in stealth and deception. Proficient with nature and poison in kits. Two languages we can have. We have noble clothes. The poison a kid. Crafting manual, basic poison, thieves tools. Shall we? Shall we do this? Paladin of Darth Geary. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I might do this. A half old paladin spy. Perfect. All right. Caution. Take care of one's own safety above all. Um. Value practicality of a principle. Wealth and comfort. Caution is good as a spy. Scoff at principle and values. You're a paladin. That doesn't work. Practicality. None of, none of this works. Oh god. Why do I have to pick two? Wealth, wealth and comfort. Spread the word of backstabbing to all. Why not? Spy acts like a good paladin, but just goes around causing trouble for the god of mischief. I think so. So then we want... I, su I suppose then we want cynicism, right? Okay, so, okay, this is really difficult. We already have caution. Violence. Is there a tendency to enforce rules and beliefs? Yeah, we don't, we don't do that. Value practicality over principle. Put oneself, friends and family first. Okay, we're also going to be a slightly egoistic. E egotistic. Uh, care about others. Preferring to make friends rather than enemies. We're going to be kind as well. So that we... You know... Maybe uh, trick other people? A cynic paladin. Yeah. Please to get the last word in if you can get the last stab in. <laughs> it is totally a weird combination, but that's a point. It's absolutely the point. Okay, I need to reroll 20 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Achievement, perfectionist. Thank you very much, Lex. I got the achievement. So, so now for the real roll. There's an 18 and a 17. It's not too bad. Uh, kind could just be another word for manipulative. Yeah. You know, it could be. We haven't seen a single 20, have we? Yeah. Well, you've got a 20 here now. Uh, strength, charisma, and constitution. I want I want three high rolls. You can do it. You can do it. Oh maybe maybe you can't. House is random what oh hey, this is good. House is random where there's not a single We have two seventies. When there's not a single twenty in there. You can't roll twenty. Oh, you can't roll 20. I thought those are just D20, D20s. Apparently not. Okay. Well then, I got, I got a 20 here. That's alright. Then we want... Uh, dexterity, because you're a spy. You need this. Wisdom and intelligence. Okay. Skills. You already have stealth, nature, deception, intimidation. Ooh, insight. What are you going to... Okay, determine true intentions of a creature. Searching for a lie. That is very good for a spy. And then persuasion. When you attempt to influence someone or a group of people with tact, social graces, or good nature, you may make a charisma persuasion check. Very good. I have the poisoner kit. And then languages. We speak common, orcish, and spies code book. If we speak dwarvish, no, we speak common already. 
Four, probably 46, summoning up to the three highest rolls. Oh, I see, I see. No, no, Dora, we started we just chatting for like two hours. Um, but yeah, I think one and a half hour now in character creation. <laughs> one and a half hours, it's, it's not too bad. This, this is totally all right. I don't know where the front is. Oh, here. A spy. Half orc, paladin, spy. You speak. You speak elvish. And. Goblin. Nobody's, nobody's speaking the, the old. To Marion, right? I'm just like, how many dragons are there? How many dwarfs are there? How many, how many giants are there? It doesn't make sense. Halfling. No, you speak, you speak common elvish halfling orcish spies codebook. Does this mean? It's not used in Crown of Magic's main campaign. Oh, does that mean I should not? Oh god. It's fine. We we take. Oh god! I need to pick it again. Persuasion, insight, halfling, elvish. Oh god! We still need to need to do the appearance. Oh! We we're spying on elves and goblins. Why not? How many languages does one person need? Well, they're a spy, so lots. Face. All right. So orcs, for me, have to be green. We're gonna be a very, very nicely green orc. This is a great orc green. So you should have a kind face, right? Is that kind? This looks angry. Face three does, okay. Skin tone, body decoration. So about those tattoos again. <laughs> hmm. They should be. I wish I had a slider here for the colors, and not just. Maybe you got with red. Although if you're a spy, that's not very. You can't really blend in with this, right? But we could say those are those are the paladin tattoos that we've got, right? Oh yeah, true. We're only half orc, right? Since you're choosing the languages to speak for your kid, yeah, that's nice and all. But how many people do you speak? <laughs> oh, it's true. It's true though. <laughs> Perfect. You know, I, I, I like this one. That's very fitting. Scars. No, I, I think she's not. She she doesn't have any scars. The hair shape, right? Half orc paladin. What about this? Oh, I don't. No, 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 not not the scars. Hair shape. Or maybe, maybe the seventeen that was just like something here at the top. It was 14. Oh, that's actually a, a braid. What about a braid? This look is haunting. <laughs> I think it's great. Gonna have black hair. Eye color is yellow. I don't know what eye colors do orcs have. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I also like the braid one. <gasps> Physique! We didn't have that earlier with the dwarf, did we? Alright, we want you to be strong. Are you okay? No! <laughs> Come on, push! Are you okay? No. <laughs> Just lucky, I guess. That one didn't even fight back. How does that feel? Looks like you did that all your life. 
I'm gonna pick voice two. We need a name for a half orc paladin spy chat. What do you got? Hi, Hildebrand. Welcome in. Hello. Good to see you. I hope you have a great Monday. Sure, you good look. Whatever color you say, they have. Top not big deal with yours, right? Fiction creatures. Yeah, but you know. Grumps. Rabarbara. <laughs> oh god, there's the, that one Rabarbara thingy. Oh, we don't get a last name, by the way. It is, it is Alasta, yes, Jane Adlin. Uh, I really like Rabarbara. Rabar, Rabarbara. Here we go. <laughs> okay. How's <laughs> this? Are we good? Also, egoism, 10 points. 10 points kindness. 8 points casual. And eight points caution, just so you know. Rue Barbara. Ra Barbara or Rue Barbara? What do you want? Purple because it's the color of stealth. Is it? Purple is the color of stealth? Where? I mean, purple is also a good fit. This one. Um... <laughs> it's a Wham, I mean. 40k orcs. Red goes faster, purple goes sneakier. Well, we go with purple then, that's alright. Okay, we'll go with Rue Barbara. Got it. Barbara used her puppy eyes to fool everyone into trusting her. Possibly. Good achievement! Dia's Vault! What does that mean? Create a paladin. Oh, you get achievements for creating classes, so I just create every class and get an achievement. Rue Barbarian. I mean, that'd be cool if she weren't a, barbar a barbarian, but she's not. So we'll have Aurora Frostine Snow Fortress, the Snow Dwarf Aristocrat Barbarian. And then we'll have Rue Barbara, the Half Orc Spy Paladin. So those are my two characters. I like that there are filters here, by the way. And then um, two of the other characters come from the dev. I'm not sure which ones he's gonna pick, but it's gonna be great. Average playtime, 8.5 hours. Average character creation time, four days. <laughs> this was great. I'm actually really glad we did this. Um, that was not planned, but I thought, you know, people said character creation takes a long time. So I thought, hey, why not just do that? 